The bassoon is a woodwind instrument in the double reed family that typically plays music written in the bass and tenor clefs, and occasionally the treble. Appearing in its modern form in the 19th century, the bassoon figures prominently in orchestral, concert band, and chamber music literature. The bassoon is a non-transposing instrument known for its distinctive tone color, wide range, variety of character and agility. Listeners often compare its warm, dark, reedy timbre to that of a male baritone voice. Someone who plays the bassoon is called a bassoonist. Etymology, the word bassoon comes from French bassin and from Italian bassin. Range. A1, bar and register trademark 1 a euro C5. The range of the bassoon begins at bar and register trademark 1 and extends upward over three octaves, roughly to the G above the treble staff. Higher notes are possible but difficult to produce, and rarely called for. Orchestral and concert band parts rarely go higher than C5 or D5. Even Stravinsky's famously difficult opening solo in the Rite of Spring only ascends to D5. A1 is possible with a special extension to the instrumental Euro C extended techniques below. Construction The bassoon disassembles into six main pieces, including the reed. The bell, extending upward. The bass joint, connecting the bell and the boot. The boot, at the bottom of the instrument and folding over on itself. The wing joint, which extends from boot to bockel. And the bockel, a crooked metal tube that attaches the wing joint to a reed. Bassoons are double reed instruments like the oboe and the English horn. A modern beginner's bassoon is generally made of maple, with medium hardness types such as sycamore maple and sugar maple preferred. Less expensive models are also made of materials such as polypropylene and ebonite, primarily for student and outdoor use. Metal bassoons were made in the past but have not been produced by any major manufacturer since 1889. The bore of the bassoon is conical, like that of the oboe and the saxophone, and the two adjoining bores of the boot joint are connected at the bottom of the instrument with a U-shaped metal connector. Both bore and tone holes are precision machined, and each instrument is finished by hand for proper tuning. The walls of the bassoon are thicker at various points along the bore. Here, the tone holes are drilled at an angle to the axis of the bore, which reduces the distance between the holes on the exterior. This ensures coverage by the fingers of the average adult hand. Wooden instruments are lined with hard rubber along the interior of the wing and boot joints to prevent damage from moisture. Wooden instruments are also stained and varnished. The end of the bell is usually fitted with a ring either of metal, plastic or ivory. The joints between sections consist of a tenon fitting into a socket. The tenons are wrapped in either cork or string as a seal against air leaks. The bockel connects the reed to the rest of the instrument and is inserted into a socket at the top of the wing joint. Bockels come in many different lengths and styles, depending on the desired tuning and playing characteristics. Folded upon itself, the bassoon stands 1.34 am tall but the total sounding length is 2.54 am. Playing is facilitated by doubling the tube back on itself and by closing the distance between the widely spaced holes with a complex system of key work, which extends throughout nearly the entire length of the instrument. There are also short-reach bassoons made for the benefit of young or petite players. Development, Early History Music historians generally consider the dulcian to be the forerunner of the modern bassoon, as the two instruments share many characteristics, a double reed fitted to a metal crook, obliquely drilled tone holes and a conical bore that doubles back on itself. The origins of the dulcian are obscure, but by the mid-16th century it was available in as many as eight different sizes, from soprano to great bass. A full consort of dulcians was a rarity. Its primary function seems to have been to provide the bass in the typical wind band of the time either loud or soft, indicating a remarkable ability to vary dynamics to suit the need. Otherwise, dulcian technique was rather primitive, with eight finger holes and two keys, indicating that it could play in only a limited number of key signatures. The dulcian came to be known as fagotto in Italy. However, the usual etymology that equates fagotto with bundle of sticks is somewhat misleading, as the latter term did not come into general use until later. Some think it may resemble the Roman faces, a standard of bound sticks with an axe. 
A further discrepancy lies in the fact that the dulcian was carved out of a single block of wood a euro in other words, a single stick, and not a bundle. Circumstantial evidence indicates that the Baroque bassoon was a newly invented instrument, rather than a simple modification of the old dulcian. The dulcian was not immediately supplanted, but continued to be used well into the 18th century by Bach and others. The man most likely responsible for developing the true bassoon was Martin Hotteter, who may also have invented the three-piece flotte e traversery and the hat boys. Some historians believe that sometime in the 1650s, Hotteter conceived the bassoon in four sections, an arrangement that allowed greater accuracy in machining the bore compared to the one-piece dulcian. He also extended the compass down to bar and registered trademark by adding two keys. An alternate view maintains Hotteter was one of several craftsmen responsible for the development of the early bassoon. These may have included additional members of the Hotteter family, as well as other French makers active around the same time. No original French bassoon from this period survives, but if it did, it would most likely resemble the earliest extant bassoons of Johann Christoph Denner and Richard Harker from the 1680s. Sometime around 1700, a fourth key was added, and it was for this type of instrument that composers such as Antonio Vivaldi, Bach, and Georg Philipp Telemann wrote their demanding music. A fifth key, for the low A unregistered trademark, was added during the first half of the 18th century. Notable makers of the four-key and five-key Baroque bassoon include J. H. Hichen Topf, J. Powershman, Thomas Stanisby, Jr., G. H. Scherer, and Prudent Theriot. Modern history, increasing demands on capabilities of instruments and players in the 19th century Euro particularly larger concert halls requiring greater volume and the rise of virtuoso composer performers a Euro spurred further refinement. Increased sophistication, both in manufacturing techniques and acoustical knowledge, made possible great improvements in the instrument's playability. The modern bassoon exists in two distinct primary forms, the buffet system and a heckle system. Most of the world plays the heckle system, while the buffet system is primarily played in France, Belgium, and parts of Latin America. Heckle system the design of the modern bassoon owes a great deal to the performer, teacher, and composer Karl Armre Currency Dare. Assisted by the German acoustic researcher Gottfried Weber, he developed the 17 key bassoon with a range spanning four octaves. Armre Currency Dare's improvements to the bassoon began with an 1823 treatise describing ways of improving intonation, response, and technical ease of playing by augmenting and rearranging the key work. Subsequent articles further developed his ideas. His employment at Schott gave him the freedom to construct and test instruments according to these new designs, and he published the results in Caecilia, Schott's house journal. On recurrency Dare continued publishing and building instruments until his death in 1846, and Ludwig van Beethoven himself requested one of the newly made instruments after hearing of the papers. In 1831, on recurrency Dare left Schott to start his own factory with a partner, Johann Adam Heckel. Heckel and two generations of descendants continued to refine the bassoon, and their instruments became the standard, with other makers following. Because of their superior singing tone quality, the Heckel instruments competed for prominence with the reformed Wiener system, a Borham style bassoon, and a completely keyed instrument devised by Charles Joseph Sachs, father of Adolf Sachs. F. W. Crusp implemented a latecomer attempt in 1893 to reform the fingering system, but it failed to catch on. Other attempts to improve the instrument included a 24-keyed model and a single reed mouthpiece, but both these had adverse effects on tone and were abandoned. Coming into the 20th century, the Heckel-style German model of bassoon dominated the field. Heckel himself had made over 1,100 instruments by the turn of the 20th century, and the British makers' instruments were no longer desirable for the changing pitch requirements of the symphony orchestra, remaining primarily in military band use. Except for a brief 1940s wartime conversion to ball-bearing manufacture, the Heckel concern has produced instruments continuously to the present day. Heckel bassoons are considered by many to be the best, although a range of Heckel-style instruments is available from several other manufacturers, all with slightly different playing characteristics. 
Companies that manufacture Heckel system bassoons include, Wilhelm Heckel, Yamaha, Fox Products, W. Schreiber and Tsar Paragraph HNE, Par 1 Quarter CHNER, Com Selma, Linton, Moosman Collette, Moenig Adler, B. H. Bell, Walter, Lietzinger and Guntron Wolf. In addition, several factories in the People's Republic of China are producing inexpensive instruments under such labels as Laval, Haydn, and Lark, and these have been available in the West for some time now. However, they are generally of marginal quality and are usually avoided by serious players. Because its mechanism is primitive compared to most modern woodwinds, makers have occasionally attempted to reinvent the bassoon. In the 1960s, Charles Brindley began to develop what he called the logical bassoon, which aimed to improve intonation and evenness of tone through use of an electrically activated mechanism, making possible key combinations too complex for the human hand to manage. Brindley's logical bassoon was never marketed. Buffett system, the Buffet system bassoon achieved its basic acoustical properties somewhat earlier than the Heckel. Thereafter it continued to develop in a more conservative manner. While the early history of the Heckel bassoon included a complete overhaul of the instrument in both acoustics and keywork, the development of the Buffet system consisted primarily of incremental improvements to the keywork. This minimalist approach deprived the Buffet of the improved consistency, ease of operation, and increased power found in the Heckel bassoons, but the Buffet is considered by some to have a more vocal and expressive quality. The conductor John Folds lamented in 1934 the dominance of the Heckel style bassoon, considering them too homogeneous in sound with the horn. Compared to the Heckel bassoon, Buffett system bassoons have a narrower bore and simpler mechanism, requiring different fingerings for many notes. Switching between Heckel and Buffet requires extensive retraining. Buffet instruments are known for a readier sound and greater facility in the upper registers, reaching E and F with far greater ease and less air pressure. French woodwind tone in general exhibits a certain amount of edge, with more of a vocal quality than is usual elsewhere, and the Buffet bassoon is no exception. This type of sound can be beneficial in music by French composers but has drawn criticism for being too intrusive. As with all bassoons, the tone varies considerably, depending on individual instrument and performer. In the hands of a lesser player, the heckle bassoon can sound flat and woody, but good players succeed in producing a vibrant, singing tone. Conversely, a poorly played buffet can sound buzzy and nasal, but good players succeed in producing a warm, expressive sound, different from a euro but not inferior to Euro the Heckel. Though the United Kingdom once favoured the French system, Buffett system instruments are no longer made there and the last prominent British player of the French system retired in the 1980s. However, with continued use in some regions and its distinctive tone, the Buffet continues to have a place in modern bassoon playing, particularly in France. Buffet modelled bassoons are currently made in Paris by Buffet Crampon and the Selma Company. Some players, for example the late Gerald Quarry in Canada, have learned to play both types and will alternate between them depending on the repertoire. Use in ensembles, earlier ensembles, orchestras first used the bassoon to reinforce the bass line, and as the bass of the double reed choir. Baroque composer Jean-Baptiste Lully and his Les Petits Violons included oboes and bassoons along with the strings in the 16-piece ensemble as one of the first orchestras to include the newly invented double reeds. Antonio Sesti included a bassoon in his 1668 opera Il Pomodoro. However, use of bassoons in concert orchestras was sporadic until the late 17th century when double reeds began to make their way into standard instrumentation. This was largely due to the spread of the Haidt boys to countries outside of France. Increasing use of the bassoon as a basso continuo instrument meant that it began to be included in opera orchestras, first in France and later in Italy, Germany and England. Meanwhile, composers such as Joseph Bodin de Boris Mortier, Michel Corette, Johann Ernst Galliard, Jan Dismas Zelenka, Johann Friedrich Faschentelemann wrote demanding solo and ensemble music for the instrument. Antonio Vivaldi brought the bassoon to prominence by featuring it in 37 concerti for the instrument. By the mid-18th century, 
the bassoon's function in the orchestra was still mostly limited to that of a continuo instrumental euro since scores often made no specific mention of the bassoon, its use was implied, particularly if there were parts for oboes or other winds. Beginning in the early Rococo era, composers such as Joseph Haydn, Michael Haydn, Johann Christian Bach, Giovanni Battista Sammartini and Johann Stamitz included parts that exploited the bassoon for its unique color, rather than for its perfunctory ability to double the bass line. Orchestral works with fully independent parts for the bassoon would not become commonplace until the classical era. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's Jupiter Symphony is a prime example, with its famous bassoon solos in the first movement. The bassoons were generally paired, as in current practice, though the famed Mannheim Orchestra boasted four. Another important use of the bassoon during the classical era was in the harmony, a chamber ensemble consisting of pairs of oboes, horns and bassoons. Later, two clarinets would be added to form an octet. The harmony was an ensemble maintained by German and Austrian noblemen for private music making, and was a cost-effective alternative to a full orchestra. Haydn, Mozart Ludwig van Beethoven and Franz Krommer all wrote considerable amounts of music for the harmony. Modern ensembles, the modern symphony orchestra typically calls for two bassoons, often with a third playing the contrabassoon. Some works call for four or more players. The first player is frequently called upon to perform solo passages. The bassoon's distinctive tone suits it for both plaintive, Lyrical solos such as Morris Ravel's bowler copyright ruined more comical ones, such as the grandfather's theme in Peter and the Wolf. Its agility suits it for passages such as the famous running line in the overture to the marriage of Figaro. In addition to its solo role, the bassoon is an effective bass to a woodwind choir, a bass line along with the cellos and double basses, and harmonic support along with the French horns. A wind ensemble will usually also include two bassoons and sometimes contrabassoon, each with independent parts. Other types of concert wind ensembles will often have larger sections, with many players on each of first or second parts. In simpler arrangements there will be only one bassoon part and no contrabassoon. The bassoon's role in the concert band is similar to its role in the orchestra, though when scoring is thick it often cannot be heard above the brass instruments also in its range. La Fiesta Mexicana, by H. Owen Reed, features the instrument prominently, as does the transcription of Malcolm Arnold's Four Scottish Dances, which has become a staple of the concert band repertoire. The bassoon is also part of the standard wind quintet instrumentation, along with the flute, oboe, clarinet, and horn. It is also frequently combined in various ways with other woodwinds. Richard Strauss's duet Concertino pairs it with the clarinet as concertante instruments, with string orchestra in support. The bassoon quartet has also gained favor in recent times. The bassoon's wide range and variety of tone colors make it ideally suited to grouping in like instrument ensembles. Peter Skikel's Last Tango in Bayreuth is a popular work. Skikel's fictional alter ego P.D.Q. Bach exploits the more humorous aspects with his quartet Lit My Reads, which at one point calls for players to perform on the reed alone. It also calls for a low A at the very end of the prelude section in the fourth bassoon part. It is written so that the first bassoon does not play. Instead, his or her role is to place an extension in the bell of the fourth bassoon so that the note can be played. Jazz the bassoon is infrequently used as a jazz instrument and rarely seen in a jazz ensemble. It first began appearing in the 1920s, including specific calls for its use in Paul Whiteman's group, the unusual octets of Alec Wilder, and a few other session appearances. The next few decades saw the instrument used only sporadically, as symphonic jazz fell out of favor, but the 1960s saw artists such as Os Flatif and Chick Corea incorporate bassoon into their recordings. Latif's diverse and eclectic instrumentation saw the bassoon as a natural addition, while Coriol employed the bassoon in combination with flautist Hubert Laws. More recently, Illinois Jacket, Ray Pazai, Frank Tiberi, and Marshall Allen have both doubled on bassoon in addition to their saxophone performances. Bassoonist Karen Borker, a performer of free jazz, is one of the few jazz musicians to play only bassoon. Michael Rabinowitz, 
the Spanish bassoonist Javier Abad, and James Lassen, an American resident in Bergen, Norway, are others. Catherine Young plays the bassoon in the ensembles of Anthony Braxton. Lindsay Cooper, Paul Hansen, the Brazilian bassoonist Alexander Silverio, Trent Jacobs and Daniel Smith are also currently using the bassoon in jazz. French bassoonists Jean-Jacques Decray and Alexander Rousanoff have both recorded jazz, exploiting the flexibility of the buffet system instrument to good effect. Popular music The bassoon is even rarer as a regular member of rock bands. However, several 1960s pop music hits feature the bassoon, including The Tears of a Clown by Smokey Robinson and The Miracles, Jennifer Juniper by Donovan, The Turtles Happy Together, Third Verse, Overdue, 59th Street Bridge Song by Harper's Bazaar, and the Oompa bassoon underlying the new vaudeville band's Winchester Cathedral. From 1974 to 1978, the bassoon was played by Lindsay Cooper in the British avant-garde band Henry Cow. In the 1970s it was played, in the British medieval progressive rock band Griffin, by Brian Gulland, as well as by the American band Ambrosia, where it was played by drummer Berle Drummond. The Belgian rock in opposition band Unniva Zero is also known for its use of the bassoon. In the 1990s, Madonna Wayne Gacy provided bassoon for the alternative metal band Marilyn Manson as did Amy Defoe, in what is self-described as grouchily lilting garage bassoon in the indie rock band Blogat from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. More recently, these new Puritans' 2010 album Hidden makes heavy use of the instrument throughout. Their principal songwriter, Jack Barnett, claimed repeatedly to be writing a lot of music for bassoon in the run-up to its recording. In early 2011, American hip-hop artist Kanye West updated his Twitter account to inform followers that he recently added the bassoon to a yet unnamed song. The rock band Better Than Ezra took their name from a passage in Ernest Hemingway's A Movable Feast in which the author comments that listening to an annoyingly talkative person is still a Euro or better than Ezra learning how to play the bassoon, a Euro referring to Ezra Pound. British psych rock prog rock band Knife World features the bassoon playing of Chloe Harrington, who also plays for experimental chamber rock orchestra Chrome Hoof. Technique The bassoon is held diagonally in front of the player, but unlike the flute, oboe and clarinet, it cannot be supported by the player's hands alone. Some means of additional support is required. The most common ones are a seat strap attached to the base of the boot joint, which is laid across the chair seat prior to sitting down, or a neck strap or shoulder harness attached to the top of the boot joint. Occasionally a spike similar to those used for the cello or the bass clarinet is attached to the bottom of the boot joint and rests on the floor. It is possible to play while standing up if the player uses a neck strap or similar harness, or if the seat strap is tied to the belt. Sometimes a device called a balance hanger is used when playing in a standing position. This is installed between the instrument and the neck strap, and shifts the point of support closer to the center of gravity. The bassoon is played with both hands in a stationary position, the left above the right, with five main finger holes on the front of the instrument plus a sixth that is activated by an open standing key. Five additional keys on the front are controlled by the little fingers of each hand. The back of the instrument has 12 or more keys to be controlled by the thumbs, the exact number varying depending on model. To stabilize the right hand, many bassoonists use an adjustable comma-shaped apparatus called a crutch, or a hand rest, which mounts to the boot joint. The crutch is secured with a thumb screw, which also allows the distance that it protrudes from the bassoon to be adjusted. Players rest the curve of the right hand where the thumb joins the palm against the crutch. The crutch also keeps the right hand from tiring and enables the player to keep the finger pads flat on the finger holes and keys. An aspect of bassoon technique not found on any other woodwind is called flicking. It involves the left hand thumb momentarily pressing, or flicking the high A, C and D keys at the beginning of certain notes in the middle octave. This eliminates cracking, or brief multiphonics that happens without the use of this technique. Flicking is not universal amongst bassoonists. Some American players, principally on the East Coast, use it sparingly, if at all. The rest use it virtually 100% of the Tamiya Euro it has become in essence part of the fingering. The alternative method is venting, 
which requires that the register key be used as part of the full fingering as opposed to being open momentarily at the start of the note. While flicking is used to higher notes, the whisper key is used for lower notes. From the or unregistered trademark right below middle C and low, the whisper key is pressed with the left thumb and held for the duration of the note. This prevents cracking, as low notes can sometimes crack into a higher octave. Both flicking and using the whisper key is especially important to ensure notes speak properly during slurring between high and low registers. While bassoons are usually critically tuned at the factory, the player nonetheless has a great degree of flexibility of pitch control through the use of breath support, embouchure, and reed profile. Players can also use alternate fingerings to adjust the pitch of many notes. Similar to other woodwind instruments, the length of the bassoon can be increased to lower pitch or decreased to raise pitch. On the bassoon, this is done preferably by changing the bockel to one of a different length, but it is possible to push the bockel in or out to adjust the pitch. Embouchure, the bassoon embouchure is a very important aspect of producing a full, round bassoon tone, but can be difficult to obtain as a beginner. The bassoon embouchure is made by putting one's lips together as if one were whistling and then dropping the jaw down as in a yawning motion. Both sets of teeth should be covered by the lips in order to protect the reed. The reed is then placed in the mouth, forming a seal around the reed with the lips and facial muscles. Extended techniques Many extended techniques can be performed on the bassoon, such as multiphonics, flutter tonguing, circular breathing, double tonguing, and harmonics. In the case of the bassoon, flutter tonguing may be accomplished by gargling in the back of the throat as well as by the conventional method of rolling RS. Also, using certain fingerings, notes may be produced on the instrument that sound lower pitches than the actual range of the instrument. These impossible notes tend to sound very gravelly and out of tune, but technically sound below the low bar and registered trademark. Alternatively, lower notes can be produced by inserting a small paper or rubber tube into the end of the bell, which converts the lower bar and registered trademark into a lower note such as an A natural. This lowers the pitch of the instrument, but has the positive effect of bringing the lowest register into tune. A notable piece that calls for the use of a low A bell is Carl Nielsen's Wind Quintet, Op. 43, which includes an optional low A for the final cadence of the work. Bassoonists sometimes use the end bell segment of an English horn or clarinet if one is available instead of a specially made extension. This often yields unsatisfactory results, though, as the resultant A can be quite sharp. The idea of using low A was begun by Richard Wagner who wanted to extend the range of the bassoon. Many passages in his later operas require the low A as well as the B-flat above. These passages are typically realized on the contrabassoon, as recommended by the composer. Some bassoons have been made to allow bassoonists to realize similar passages. These bassoons are made with a Wagner bell, which is an extended bell with a key for both the low A and the low B-flat. Bassoons with Wagner bells suffer similar intonational deficiencies as a bassoon with an A extension. Another composer who has required the bassoon to be chromatic down to low A is Gustav Mahler. Richard Strauss also calls for the low A in his opera Intermezzo. Learning the bassoon, the complicated fingering and the problem of reeds make the bassoon more difficult to learn than some of the other woodwind instruments. Cost is another factor in a person's decision to pursue the bassoon. Prices range from $8,000 up to $25,000 for a good quality instrument. In North America, schoolchildren typically take up bassoon only after starting on another reed instrument, such as clarinet or saxophone. Students in America often begin to pursue the study of bassoon performance and technique in the middle years of their music education. Students are often provided with a school instrument and encouraged to pursue lessons with private instructors. Students typically receive instruction in proper posture, hand position, embouchure, tone production, and reed making. Reeds and reed construction, modern reeds. Bassoon reeds, made of air undo donax cane, are often made by the players themselves, although beginner bassoonists tend to buy their reeds from professional reed makers or use reeds made by their teachers. Reeds begin with a length of tube cane that is split into three or four pieces. The cane is then trimmed and gouged to the desired thickness, 
leaving the bark attached. After soaking, the gouged cane is cut to the proper shape and milled to the desired thickness, or profile, by removing material from the bark side. This can be done by hand with a file. More frequently it is done with a machine or tool designed for the purpose. After the profiled cane has soaked once again it is folded over in the middle. Prior to soaking, the reed maker will have lightly scored the bark with parallel lines with a knife. This ensures that the cane will assume a cylindrical shape during the forming stage. On the bark portion, the reed maker binds on one, two, or three coils or loops of brass wire to aid in the final forming process. The exact placement of these loops can vary somewhat depending on the reed maker. The bound reed blank is then wrapped with thick cotton or linen thread to protect it, and a conical steel mandrel is quickly inserted in between the blades. Using a special pair of pliers, the reed maker presses down the cane, making it conform to the shape of the mandrel. The upper portion of the cavity thus created is called the throat, and its shape has an influence on the final playing characteristics of the reed. The lower, mostly cylindrical portion will be reamed out with a special tool, allowing the reed to fit on the bockel. After the reed has dried, the wires are tightened around the reed, which has shrunk after drying, or replaced completely. The lower part is sealed and then wrapped with thread to ensure both that no air leaks out through the bottom of the reed and that the reed maintains its shape. The wrapping itself is often sealed with duco or clear nail varnish. The bulge in the wrapping is sometimes referred to as the Turk's head a euro it serves as a convenient handle when inserting the reed on the bockel. To finish the reed, the end of the reed blank, originally at the center of the unfolded piece of cane, is cut off, creating an opening. The blades above the first wire are now roughly 27 a euro 30 on long. For the reed to play, a slight bevel must be created at the tip with a knife, although there is also a machine that can perform this function. Other adjustments with the knife may be necessary, depending on the hardness and profile of the cane and the requirements of the player. The reed opening may also need to be adjusted by squeezing either the first or second wire with the pliers. Additional material may be removed from the sides or tip to balance the reed. Additionally, if the E in the staff is sagging in pitch, it may be necessary to clip the reed by removing one the Euro 2 arm from its length. Playing styles of individual bassoonists vary greatly. Because of this, most advanced players will make their own reeds, in the process customizing them to their individual playing requirements. Many companies and individuals do offer reeds for sale, but even with store-bought reeds, the player must know how to make adjustments to suit his particular playing style. Early reeds, little is known about the early construction of the bassoon reed, as few examples survive and much of what is known is only what can be gathered from artistic representations. The earliest known written instructions date from the middle of the 17th century, describing the reed as being held together by wire or resin thread. The earliest actual reeds that survive are more than a century younger, a collection of 21 reeds from the late 18th century Spanish Bajan. Bassoon Repertoire Baroque Johann Friedrich Fasch, several bassoon concerti the best known is in C major, Christoph Graubner, four bassoon concerti, Johann Wilhelm Hertel, bassoon concerto in A minor, Georg Philipp Telemann, sonata in F minor, Antonio Vivaldi, 39 concerti for bassoon, 37 of which exist in their entirety today, January Dismas Zelenka, six trio sonatas for two oboes, bassoon and basso continuo, classical, Johann Christian Bach, Bassoon Concerto in Bar and Registered Trademark Bassoon Concerto in A and Registered Trademark Major. Franz Danzi, Bassoon Concerto in G Minor, Bassoon Concerto in C, 2 Bassoon Concerto in F Major. Frenna Section Wa de Vienne, 12 Sonatas, 3 Quartets, Bassoon Concerto, 6 Duos Concertants. Johann Nepomuk Hummel, Grand Concerto for Bassoon, Leopold Kozlich. Bassoon Concerto in Bar and Registered Trademark Major, Bassoon Concerto in C Major. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, Bassoon Concerto in Bar and Registered Trademark, K191, the only surviving of the original three bassoon concertos he wrote. Antonio Rossetti, Bassoon Concertos in F Major, Bassoon Concertos in Bar and Registered Trademark Major, 
bassoon concerto in A in registered trademark major. Carl Stamitz, bassoon concerto in F major, Johann Baptist Wannell, bassoon concerto in C major, concerto in F major for two bassoons and orchestra. Romantic, Franz Bewald, Concerts to one quarter CK, Ferdinand David, Concertino for bassoon and orchestra, op. 12, Edward Elgar, Romance for bassoon and orchestra, op. 62, Johann Nepomuk Fuchs, Bassoon Concerto in Bar and Registered Trademark Major, Julius Fu on AK, Der Alte Brumbar Currency R for Bassoon and Orchestra, Op. 210, Reinhold Gleary, Humoresque and Impromptu for Bassoon and Piano, Op. 35, Nose. 8 and 9, Camille saint saul NS, Sonata for Bassoon and Piano in G Major, Op. 168, Karl Maria von Weber, and Anti E. Rondo in Paris in C minor, op. 35, Bassoon Concerto in F, op. 75. 20th century, Luciano Birio, Sequenza 12 for solo bassoon, Pierre Boulez, Dialogue de l'Embre double for bassoon and electronics, Howard J. Bass, A Day in the City for solo bassoon, Time Capsule for oboe and bassoon, Desert Odyssey for clarinet, bassoon and piano. Edison Denisov, Cinque Etudes for bassoon, Sonata for solo bassoon. Franco Donatini, Concerto for bassoon, Henri Dutilleur, Saraband A quarter G for bassoon and piano, Regards sur l'infini in de sonnets de Jean Casa for bassoon and piano. Alvin Eater, Sonata for bassoon and piano, Jean from a section X, Quadruple Concerto for flute, oboe. Clarinet, bassoon and orchestra, divertissement for bassoon and string quintet, Lecoq et Le Renard for four bassoons, set impromptus for flute and bassoon, trio for oboe, bassoon and piano, two pieces for bassoon and piano. Glenn Gould, sonata for bassoon and piano, Sophia Gubadelina, concerto for bassoon and low strings, duo sonata for two bassoons. Paul Hindemith, sonata for bassoon and piano, Four pieces for cello and bassoon, concerto for trumpet, bassoon and orchestra, concerto for flute, oboe, clarinet, bassoon, harp and orchestra. Bertold Hummel, concertino for bassoon and strings, op. 27b, five epigrams for bassoon solo op. 51, divertimento for bassoon and violin cello, op. 62. Gordon Jacob, concerto for bassoon, strings and percussion, Four sketches for bassoon, partita for bassoon. Paul Giangian, prelude and scherzo for bassoon and piano, Andrew Copyright to Live It, concerto for bassoon, strings, harp and piano, Lev Nipper, concerto for bassoon and strings, Charles Coechlin, sonata for bassoon and piano, Gia Paragraph R G Y Kurta G, Jata Copyright Cocker Copyright SA One Quarter Zenit for solo bassoon, Mary Jane Leach. Few de joie for solo bassoon and six taped bassoons, Anne Le Baron, after a damned to hell for bassoon solo, Peter Maxwell Davis, Strathclyde Concerto No. 8 for bassoon and orchestra, Francisco Mignone, double bassoon sonata, 16 valses for bassoon. Wilson Osborne, Rhapsody for bassoon, and Zedge Panyafnik, Concerto for bassoon and small orchestra, Sergei Prokofiev, Humoristic Scherzo for four bassoons, Op. 12b, Aina Johanni Rotevara, Bassoon Sonata, Alan Ridout, Concertino for Bassoon and Strings, Wolfgang Ryan, Salmas for Bassoon and Orchestra, Richard Strauss, Duet Concertino for Clarinet and Bassoon with Strings and Harp, Franklin Stover, Capriccio Borgona for Bassoon and Chamber Orchestra, Stjapan Angstromalik, Concerto for Bassoon and Orchestra, Alexander Tansman, Sonatine for bassoon and piano, Suite for bassoon and piano. John Williams, The Five Sacred Trees, Concerto for bassoon and orchestra, Imano Wolferari, Suite Concertino for bassoon and chamber orchestra, Ellen Tafsweilich, Concerto for bassoon and orchestra, 21st century, John Babakis, Three Walks in Zamolk, Concerto for bassoon, harpsichord, and string orchestra, Howard J. Bass, Ballad for bassoon and piano. Behind the invisible mask for bassoon and one percussion. 
fables from Aesop for bassoon and violin. Four miniatures for two bassoons. Aquarius for three bassoons. Levi's Dream for bassoon quartet. Prelude and Intrada for bassoon quartet or ensemble. Contrasts and Blue for oboe, bassoon and piano. Cosmic Portraits for flute, oboe, clarinet and bassoon. The Heavens Awaken for bassoon and string quartet. Trio Lyric for horn, bassoon and piano. Turbulent Times for flute, bassoon and piano. Village Scenes for oboe, clarinet and bassoon. Eric E. Wazen, Concerto for bassoon and wind ensemble, Christian Omar and NES, 12 bassoon studies, Branco Okmarka, Metamorphosis for bassoon solo. Concerto for bassoon and orchestra, Robert Patterson, Sonata for bassoon and piano. Elegy for two bassoons and piano, Franklin Stover, Double Concerto for bassoon, Contra bassoon, String orchestra, Graham Waterhouse, Bassin Quintet. Bright Angel for Three Bassoons and Contra Bassoon, Robert Ra and NES, Five Sonatas for Bassoon and Piano, Patrick Nunn, Gonk for Bassoon and Sound File, Works Featuring Prominent Bassoon Passages, Bar Copyright La Barta Cubed K, Concerto for Orchestra. The second movement features woodwind instruments in pairs, beginning with the bassoons, and the recapitulation of their duet adds a third instrument playing a staccato counter melody. Ludwig van Beethoven, Symphony No. 4 in B-flat major, 4th movement. Symphony 9 in D minor, 4th movement, after the 24-measure exposition of the Ode to Joy, the first bassoon enters with a prominent counter-melody for the next 24 measures, and continues a solo to add emphasis to the theme. Hector Berlioz, Symphony Fantastique. In the 4th movement, there are several solo and tutti bassoon passages. This piece calls for four bassoons. George's Bizet, Carmen, in Act to Act Two. Benjamin Britten, The Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra, Variation D features the bassoons. Emmanuel Chabriera Espar plus or minus a, four bassoons in unison play a Spanish tune. Michael Doughty, Alligator Alley features bassoon solos at the beginning and lively melody through the whole piece. Gatano Donizetti, Una Fativa Lagrima. From the Italian opera, La Cidamor, opens with a solo bassoon passage. Paul Dior The Sorcerer's Apprentice, widely recognized as used in the film Fantasia. The main melody is first heard in a famous bassoon solo passage. Edward Grieg, in the Hall of the Mountain King. Modest Masorg Sky, pictures it in exhibition as orchestrated by Maurice Ravel. Particularly Promenade II, Il Vecchio Castlo and Ballet of the Chicks in Their Shells. Karl Orff, Camina Burena, the Twelfth Movement, Olim Lacus Calurum, opens with a high bassoon solo. Xistof Penderecki, Symphony No. 4 Adagio, a long solo passage followed by strings in the background appears in the middle of the symphony. Sergei Prokofiev, Peter and the Wolf, the theme of the Grandfather. Piano Concerto No. 3 in C Major Op. 26, Third Movement, Bassoon and cellos play the theme in staccato and pizzicato. Maurice Ravel, Rhapsody Spagnol, features a fast, lengthy dual cadenza at the end of the first movement. Bola copyright row, the bassoon has a high descending solo passage near the beginning. Piano concerto in G major. Piano concerto in D major, prominent use of contrabassoon in the opening. Ma Ma Rewa contrabassoon solo in the fourth part. Alvarado del Gracioso, solo after the theme, a long solo. Otterino Respigai, Tritico Botticelliano, the second movement, Ladarazian Dei Magi, opens with a bassoon solo which transitions into an oboe bassoon duet. The bassoon appears solo later in the movement also in a different figure. Nikolai Rimsky Kosakov, Scheherazade, second movement. Dmitry Shostakovich, Several symphonies including No. 1, No. 4, No. 5, No. 7 Leningrad First Movement, No. 8, and No. 9, No. 10, No. 15. Jean Sibelius, Symphony 2 in D minor, Second Movement Opening Euro Bassoons Play in Octaves. Symphony 5 in E flat major. Igor Stravinsky, The Rite of Spring, 
opens with a famously unorthodox bassoon solo. The Firebird, Bursus. Pulcinella Suite. Piotr like Tchaikovsky, Symphony 4 in F minor, Symphony 5 in E minor, Symphony 6 in B minor. Giuseppe Verdi La Donna Mobile, from the opera Rigoletto, bassoon plays the theme on the end of the aria. Notable bassoonists. Currently active. See also. References. Sources, The Double Read, IDRS Publications, Journal of the International Double Read Society, IDRS Publications, Baines, Anthony, Musical Instruments Through the Ages, Penguin Books, 1961. Jansen, Will, The Bassoon, Its History, Construction, Makers, Players, and Music, with Jeveridge F. Neuf, 1978. Five Volumes, Cop, James B., The Emergence of the Late Baroque Bassoon, in the Double Read, Volume 22 No. 4. Cop, James B., The Bassoon 297 Pages. A Scholarly History, Lang, H. J. and Thompson, J. M. The Baroque Bassoon, Early Music, July 1979. Lang Will, Linda Say G., The Bassoon and Contrabassoon, W. W. Norton and Colorado, 1965. McKay, James R. A. L., The Bassoon Read Manual, Lou Skinner's Techniques, Indiana University Press, 2001. Popkin, Mark and Glickman, Lauren, Bassoon Read Making, Charles Double Read Company. Publication. 3rd ed., 2007, Sadie, Stanley, The New Grove Dictionary of Musical Instruments, S.V. Bassoon, 2001, Spencer, William, The Art of Bassoon Playing, Summy Burchard Incorporated, 1958, Storfer, George B. The Modern Orchestra, A Creation of the Late Eighteenth Century. In Joan Pisa The Orchestra, Origins and Transformations PPA 41 a Euro 72. Charles Scribner's Sons. Weaver, Robert L. The Consolidation of the Main Elements of the Orchestra, 1470 Euro 1768. In Joan Pisa The Orchestra, Origins and Transformations PPA 7 Euro 40. Charles Scribner's Sons. Further reading, Dorman was Marino, A Urea, Bassoon Playing in Perspective, Character and Performance Practice from 1800 to 1850. Studia Musicologica Universitatis Helsingiensis, 26. University of Helsinki, 2013. ISNA 0787-4294. ISBN 978-952-10-9443-9. 978-952-10-9444-6 Abstract. External links. Resources and Information for Bassoonists, Documentary, The Production of a Bassoon by Francois de Rudder, Internet Contrabassoon Resource, International Double Read Society, British Double Read Society, Bassoon Fingering Charts, A Guide to Bassoon Keywork, The Art of the Bassoon Wisconsin Public Radio's University of the Air hosts an hour-long program on the bassoon. Kirtle, Dulcian. Barge Cube Den A Euro A History of the Precursor to the Bassoon Magical Bay's Comprehensive Book, Marvin Finsmith's Hands on Bassoon, The Glickman Popkin Bassoon Camp.